Marketing. Let's be honest, marketing may be the single greatest reason people go to watch a certain film. It's such an integral part to get butts in the seats. You may have made the best movie of all time, a real modern day Citizen Kane, but without the right marketing push, people aren't going to go see it. Listen, if your film is super special effects driven, you can market that. If there's a big named actor in your movie, you can market that. There's always a marketing angle you can take. You know what? Let's actually play a game. I'm going to describe elements from a movie and you are going to tell me how you would market it. Okay, this is a low budget horror film that takes place in a single location, a big rotting Victorian style house. There is a cast of disposable young adults made of males and females. There's an old elderly lady starting to kill them off one by one. The killed young adults come back as zombies. There's a ton of great gore. The tone is a little comedic, but it's played straight. So how would you market it? Okay, so I'm thinking you throw a bunch of dudes on a poster that aren't even in the film. You dress them up so they look like the new kids on the block, you know? No, I'm serious. They should literally look like the new kids on the block. Put them in front of a suburban home. Use some bright colors, maybe some funky fonts. Oh, that's not what you would do? Weird, because that's what they actually did to market it. Uh -huh. uh, not the direction I would have gone, but oh well. This is 1989's Dead Dudes in the House, also known as The Dead Come Home. But my favorite title is the more fitting title, The House on Tombstone Hill. Welcome to the Hellbound Horror Show. The house on Tombstone Hill starts 40 years ago. We get this perfectly centered shot of a girl sitting on a couch while an older woman nervously paces back and forth with a knife. We pull back and see a man has been murdered on the floor, and that's it. We cut forward 40 years with a bunch of young adults pulling up to a huge, rotting Victorian style home. They're gonna start some basic repairs on the property as one of the friends just bought the place. While looking around the premise, they discover a tombstone. The jerk of the group breaks it though. Oh no, maybe by breaking the tombstone, the spirit of the dead is unleashed. Uh, maybe you woke her up, man. <laughs> <laughs> They also find a noose on one of the trees in the back. Spooky. They travel inside and while they bicker, an elderly old woman walks into frame. She doesn't speak, but she does walk away after they tell her to leave. The guy who bought the house goes in to check on the old woman to make sure she actually left. And this is where weird things begin to happen. They are locked inside the house. No matter what they do, no matter how much they try, they can't escape. Come on guys, stop using styrofoam to try to break those windows. One by one, the old lady kills off the group and each dead dude comes back to life as a zombie and attacks a living. It's very similar to the evil dead, but with a few more characters. These zombies also taunt the living and some of it's pretty funny, while other moments are effectively creepy. I just want to talk to you. I, I do. And then kill you. <laughs> Come on! And that's the gist? You get what kind of movie you're getting. There's a lot of great gore effects, especially for a film that was made for $200,000. It's impressive for sure considering the budget. The location is great, but the inside of it does feel a bit samey. The outside of the house though is awesome and interesting. I don't have much to say about this movie. It's very by the books, but with exceptional gore. The acting is hit or miss, but mostly miss. The direction and cinematography is a bit flat, some interesting shots and framing, but there's also a lot of moments of a camera on a tripod where nothing happens for way too long. Characters were unfortunately underwritten. There's no emotional tie and nothing to really keep you invested as you wait for the next gore piece. I can say that the film starts fast and it trims the fat, 
but then there's nothing left but a little bit of meat and mostly boring bone. This was director James Riffle's first film and he knew he wanted to make a horror picture as there are usually pretty good returns on that. He was relatively young at the time and he didn't know industry standards, so he unprofessionally went door to door asking for funds before he even shot. He'd find the numbers of rich people in magazines and would call them and ask them to back his project. Eventually, he was able to get $200,000. He found this awesome house in Upper New York that would let him film there for a few months, and then he found non-union actors and started filming. And filming went well. Many of the actors and directors say that filming was basically a breeze. It was a good time and everyone got along. It wasn't until distribution where things went south. James didn't know how to market the film, and people didn't want to pay him money up front. In his audio-only interview, James says that he wished he had a star in this picture to help promote it. He gives a bit of advice in his interview. He cites that many hours of videos are posted on YouTube every minute, and competition is crazy tough nowadays. So it's best to be able to market yourself, and that you should try to get a star or a selling point. Listening to his interview, he focused a ton on the marketing side of things. After his failure of finding the proper distribution, he settled with Troma Entertainment, who decided to capitalize on the new kids on the block trend. After he finished his first film, James thought about his next picture and thought of the marketing side of things first. He came up with a crazy 39 word title. Night of the Day of the Dawn of the Sun of the Bride of the Return of the Revenge of the Terror of the Attack of the Evil Mutant Alien Flesh-Eating Hellbound Zombified Living Dead Part 2 in Shocking 2D. James didn't have a marketing team or even a publicist. On his own, he bought a small ad in Vanity Fair and just listed the title of his movie. And before he even started filming, it blew up. News outlets talked about the absurdity of the title, papers were making fun of it, and even Letterman mocked it on TV. But it got more attention without a single frame shot than his completed good film. Just goes to show, without the right marketing, you won't reach your audience. Now if you excuse me, I gotta upload this review onto YouTube where I'm not gonna promote it, I'm not gonna share it, I'm basically gonna pretend that it doesn't exist. One of my videos is going to blow up on YouTube with that strategy, right? Right? Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoy this content and want to support the channel, please consider subscribing or by buying me a coffee in the description below. Any little bit helps. Thank you.